Thanks to Midwest Writing Center for everything. Uh, in all my years to keep groups and that, thanks to all the great people I've heard. Um, this is going back to the magazine out of Rockford called the Rockford Review in 2005. Um, kind of had fun playing with different settings that I'd seen with this story. It's called Hideaway. Interstate 94 runs along the western edge of Michigan and leads to Warren Dunes Park and its beach on Lake Michigan. The park's distant from the crowded Chicago neighborhood where I grew up provides a sense of relief. Its familiarity is the reason why I went away to college and is the reason why I returned. At the park, I opened the passenger door of my red Camaro, the car that I had bought from working nights and weekends at a donut shop after high school. Old Red is what I call it. The car I drove for my date at senior prom and to go away to college. Tammy, my high school girlfriend, extends her hand and I help her out of the car. She flashes a smile and I wonder why I am with her now or why she called to meet with me. I wonder why her smile doesn't make me feel as good as it did back then. Did you miss me, she asks, wrapping strands of her dishwater blonde hair around her finger. Actually, I've been too busy to think about you, I reply. The cool breeze off Lake Michigan helps me put my freshman year behind me. The uncertainty of changing majors from earth science to psychology. The uneasy transition from home to a fraternity. In one year, I've almost changed my majors as often as the average student does in four. So who says you're an average student, she teases. Barefoot, she takes ten or steps across the asphalt parking lot. Her blue floral dress billows in the wind, winds that sweep across the lake. It almost looks too big for her but I figure it must be her latest taste in clothing, another change in spirit. It must be comfortable, I figure. I thought that I knew you, I mutter. When we step onto the sand, she grabs my hand, offering a soft touch that I had almost forgotten. Why did you stop writing me, she asks. I didn't think that there was any need to write. She stops and lets out a sigh, reminding me of our arguments during our time spent together during our four years at Finger High School. As we catch a glimpse off of Lake Michigan's endless expanse of water, memories of our rendezvous at this park return like waves to the shoreline. I remember how I thought then about our times together would never end. How's Billy, I ask, as scorn fills my voice. I don't know, she says. She turns to look at me and appears as if she's going to cry. Her face is pale. I take her I take her to a spot on the sandy incline to the lake and wonder why I lost the words to comfort of comfort to offer her. We unfold a brown blanket to claim the area and sit together, shoulders touching. Distant waters swell in the waves that crash onto the shoreline and spread across the beach before receding into the body of water. I still feel amazed by this endless body of water, breathing, controlled by forces I still don't understand. Overhead sky is threatened by the leader to the lake anyway. Water laps at our feet as we walk, holding hands, swinging arms together as if we are children again. The waters swell and rise to our calves with the arrival of larger waves. The horizon hides the downtown skyline of Chicago and the lake pulsates. Red flags snap in the wind, warning us to stay out of the water's reach. My knee sore from a long run hurts in the pull of the water. I look around and notice that we are the only ones here. Remember how we used to walk along here on days like this until the guards came and chased us away? Then we'd, then we'd go back after he walked up the beach. She laughs. That was fun. I stop and she turns to me. We face each other, my hand holding hers. Only this time, extended arms keep us apart. So what happened to Billy, I asked. Let's just say that he decided to leave me. So why'd you call me? The harshness in my voice startles me. I thought they were still friends. She sobs. Just then, the sky releases a torrent of water. We run to a nearby grove of trees. A part of me still feels protective of her, and I wonder what is drawing us together. The patter of rain on overhead leaves sounds like 1,000 fingers tapping on a plastic sheet. The canopy of trees offers shelter, except for the occasional drops the gusts of wind shake from the leaves. I feel even further from the city. 
She nudges me and I hold her. What happened, I ask. I don't know, you went away. What about last summer when you were here and you said that we'd always be together? Was that a lie? I want to pull away from her, but she won't let go of me. Her body is shaking, she is sobbing. I don't know, she says. Words fail us, leaving only silence, and I give her a squeeze. She feels different. I run my hand along her belly to feel the fullness that her dress hides. I want to ask who the father is, but I'm afraid. Besides, he's gone. Now a tear runs down my cheek. I break the silence by asking, do you need a friend? When the rain lets up, we walk along the lake once more. The waters still rise and subside around us. I wrap my arm around her waist to keep her by my side. We take our time getting back to the car. I open the door for her and she says, you're, you're so kind. This time we take a slow drive on a two-lane blacktop along the lake. Distance obscures the breadth of its life, much like an oversized blue floral dress. Thank you.